I've been in journalism 40 years and um, my passion is no less today than it was. In fact, it's grown because uh, I was very raw and wet behind the ears 40 years ago. Uh, but I was curious about the things that made the world go round, if you like. Those things that uh, influenced the big and the small outcomes. And I still am. It's a choice between a government with a strong record and plans for the future. The Carpenter government has been a government of indecision. I'm committing a re-elected Labor government to the construction of a new... And I find myself as the Premier of Western Australia. Welcome to Western Australia's election night. You've already cast the dice. Now the count has started. And here at the electoral tally room in the ABC studios in East Perth, we'll reveal the picture in all its detail as it emerges. Alan Carpenter called this election the earliest in the century to capitalise on the Liberal Party's well-publicised leadership problems and started a clear favourite. This morning, Labor was flirting with defeat, with polls saying support is split 50-50. And it is possible that the comeback Liberal leader Colin Barnett could be State Premier by the time we go to bed. Labor holds 32 seats in the existing 57-seat Parliament. The Liberals and Nationals, 22 seats between them, and Independents, three. But of course the redistribution which favours Labor will change the face of the new parliament. There are now going to be 59 seats and on paper, notionally, Labor starts with 38 of them based on past voting figures. That means they can lose eight seats and still cling to power. But to win government in their own right as a coalition, the Liberals and Nationals will have to win 11 seats. The other possibility is a hung parliament with independents holding the balance of power. And as the vote emerges from the WI Electoral Commission and the ABC Specialist Election Computer System, with its capacity to make early predictions, we'll also be crossing to the marginal electorates that are going to make or break the Carpenter government. With me tonight, backed up by their party headquarters strategists and scrutineers out in the key seats, are Labor's Foreign Minister, Stephen Smith, and Federal Deputy Liberal Leader, Julie Bishop. The ABC State Line's uh, Rebecca Carmody is also on the panel tonight and the maestro of any of our election night counts, ABC election analyst Anthony Green. Now, Anthony, first up, the votes are very sparse right at this minute, but do you expect them to pick up speed in this next half hour and we, we begin to get a picture before we uh, They've, yes, get the, too far? At this stage of the night, you get little tiny booths from Blackwood Stirling and Central Wheat Belt, and you get, um, we got two booths from um, Perth Airport, which have both have about 10 votes and are very meaningless. So in the next half hour, we start to get some votes. They tend to come from the regional areas first, and after seven, around 7 o'clock, you start to get the first Perth booths. OK. Stephen Smith... Uh, I wonder if you're getting uh, the echo of the 89 election where Labor scraped back uh, with a handful of, uh, of preferences in marginal seats. Well, I think that's the most relevant modern comparison. You've got a state Labor government trying to go from two terms to three, eight years to 12. Count now. I'm going to do an, something unusual, Kerry, which is a request through the television. If there's anybody from the Electoral Commission watching tonight, I would greatly request them to start to enter their preference totals into their computer system or everybody's going to be here till midnight because if you put in all the primary votes first but you don't put any preference counts in none of us are going to be any the wiser so that's a, an urgent request to the electoral commission who i know there are no preference counts been put in yet and i know they must be in there and, and i'll say please at the end of that on, on anthony's <laughs> behalf uh, and uh we uh just before we... We're about to cross the floor, but just before we do, you're, you've got some late stuff on Morley. Uh, Mount, no, it was Mount so, Lawley. Oh, Mount, Mount Lawley, which is... Now, we've got, uh, we've got votes swirling around all over the place uh, at present, but uh, this is uh, developing into a fascinating night, and uh, we could be heading... Uh, we could be heading for a change of government. It's obviously too early to call that yet, but with nearly 12% of the vote counted... There are seven seats. Uh, if we look at our scoreboard graphic, there are seven seats in play, Labor seats, in play, heading towards the Liberal Party, possibly eight, actually, uh, heading towards the Liberal Party at this point, uh, and that's seven away from Labor. Still in play, but that's, uh, that's where they're headed, and uh, only the seat of Albany that, uh, that um, uh, amongst those seats shifting from the redistribution figures, only Albany that uh, would be heading towards Labor. Uh, Anthony, uh, can we take a look at the Chamber? Yes, at this stage, um, 
We've got a huge 14% vote for independence, which is rather confusing me, but it does seem we've got a lot of vote from Churchlands. I think that's partly what's causing it. We're saying the Labour Party's got definitely 21, the Liberals 17, Nationals 2 and one other. And we have some other seats which we are, say, are leaning one way or the other, which gets Labour up to 24, Liberals 18, Nationals 4 and one other. And that's as far as we're prepared to go at the moment. OK, can we, uh, can we have a look at, uh, at some of those changing seats, Anthony? Uh, no, Potentially this, changing this seats. list has been tossed up towards me, and at this stage it's saying, um, Frank Alban, I'd want to see a little bit more counting, but at this stage Frank Just Alban is certainly ahead in that electorate. The electorate of Southern River, which I haven't had a look at, uh, this is Peter Abetz, who's the brother of the, of the Tasmanian Liberal Senator. Again, I'd want a closer look at those figures, so I wouldn't call that as a Labor gain yet at this stage. Um, the election of Pilbara is put here as a Labor gain. I wouldn't call that a Labor gain at all at this stage. Um, I think I would want to see... Oh, I've got Tom Stevens holding it now, so it's no longer a Labor gain. So it, uh, it has changed since I last looked at it in the computer. <laughs> Now, the first one of these I'm going to agree with is the electorate of Kingsley. And we're definitely giving Kingsley to, to Andrea Mitchell and a newly elected Liberal MP. We are also listing as a changing seat the electorate of Bunbury. That's because it's notionally Labor, but John Castrilli is the sitting Le Liberal MP. It's a matter of whether you view him as having won the seat, gained the seat or retained the seat. He's definitely back in Let's Parliament. Let's say he's retained it. He is re-elected. The um, next one I've got tossed up towards me is Mount Lawley. Now, I haven't had a look at these numbers, so I'm not prepared to agree with that number being tossed at me. So I don't know whether Michael Sutherland is re-elected as, is elected as the member of Mount Lawley or not. So I'm not happy with that. So, um, I'm not happy either. I've had... Um, <laughs> For different reasons. <laughs> <laughs> because you think... So, of those seats, <laughs> we've just given six seats to the other side, and of them only Kingsley is the only one I'm prepared to do in those lines. OK, now, Stephen, can you run us through your list of marginals? Well, I'll go up the pendulum. Kingsley, uh, I think Kingsley's uh, lost to Labor. Collie, I think Mick Murray uh, is still in the hunt. Uh, I'm reading between lines from the two of you and saying it's starting to sound like Goodnight Nurse. But uh... um, I would, I'd like to point out some things, Owen. Again, if someone in the Electoral Commission is listening, there's a 26%... Well, why don't we ask our executive producer to ring the Electoral Commission and pass on what you're the, saying? There's isn't? a 26% swing in Cannington, which cannot be right. There has to be a data entry error in the numbers well, which are provided that's, to me. That's so, why I was writing yeah. notes to you and holding <laughs> up Cannington. What is going on? OK, I'll try and find out. Well, I'll, yeah, I'll ring well, the candidate. Well, while, while we wait for our, for our passionate appeal to go through to the Electoral Commission on preferences, uh, can we have a look at the seat of Vass... Anthony, because we've got uh, Troy Buswell standing by. I just want to have a quick picture of it first. We've, we've got 15. Uh, you know, whatever comes my way, I'd be happy to do. And I think I might have caught you dancing and entertaining the crowd a bit earlier on. Is that what you've been up to? Well, we've been on hold here for about 12 minutes, Rebecca. It's pretty cold outside. Uh, and so I was just trying to stimulate circulation to my extremities. But uh, I'm sure the next cross will be far more timely. Troy Buswell, thank you. I think that's why he gets himself into trouble. <laughs> OK, well, look, uh, the best we can say at this stage of the night is that the government is obviously in trouble. Uh, but uh, And we've got 17 or 18 per cent of the vote counted, but at this stage it would seem we're still not getting any preference count going into the system from the Electoral Commission, which leaves us uh, trying to best guess seat outcomes on the basis of our own uh, projections of how those preferential votes might flow. That's the state of play at the moment, but the government clearly in trouble. And uh, Stephen Smith, you were reluctant to call on Mount Lawley, but I think uh, you might have changed your mind. Well, I've, I've spoken direct to 